<laughs> like, you have no idea how much I like already love and adore you and just Aww. hear so many stories about you. And I'm like, wow, well, Greta leads worship too. This is oh, amazing. I, I'm here with hey, you, little Bubba. <laughs> <laughs> The tag oh, I love you. I, I can't wait it. to hug you and all the women I'm, that are coming. I'm so excited. We're booking everything for February, so I'm excited. Yes. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. Well, lead us, girls. I'm excited. Okay. Um, before we jump in, I just wanted to read um, a few verses from Psalm 33. It says, Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous ones. Praise from the upright is beautiful. Praise the Lord with the lyre. Make music to him with a ten-stringed harp. Sing a new song to him. Play skillfully on the strings with a joyful shout. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his work is trustworthy. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the Lord's unfailing love. The heavens are made by the word of the Lord, and all the stars by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the water of the sea into a heap. He puts the depths into storehouses. Let the whole earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it came into being. He commanded and it came into existence. We wait for the Lord. He is our help and shield. For our hearts rejoice in him because we trust in his holy name. May your faithful love rest on us, Lord. For we put our hope in you. Jesus, we just thank you so much for your faithfulness. We thank you, Father, that you continue to be faithful from generation to generation, that your love is steadfast, that your love does not move, it does not shake, that you are unshakable. Jesus, we say you are worthy of our affection. You are worthy to be loved. You are worthy to be desired. And we say that we need you. I need you. In my mess, in my brokenness, I need you. More than anything in this world, more than anyone in this world, it's to you, Jesus. It's to you, Jesus. You are the one. You are the one. Holy Spirit, would you come? Cause our hearts to cause, cause us to burn for this righteous man. May the flames of our hearts never go out. May the fire on our altar never burn out. We love you. We love you. We bless you. We bless your name. Bless what you are doing in this nation, what you're doing on the lives. We thank you for, for every woman that's on here, Jesus, that you are going to touch hearts today, that you are going to break addictions, you are going to break depression, you are going to break anxiety, you are going to break suicidal thoughts today on this live. We thank you that you are going to bring things into alignment that you are going to bring comfort. You're going to bring identity and truth. We thank you, Holy Spirit.
my friends, praise my friends, and making my heart crystal clear. Break my friends, praise my friends, making my heart.
been reading through Revelation and I've been just getting stuck in Revelation 1, 2, and 3. But what Greta is singing right now, Beholding Jesus, is something that I felt like he was speaking to me. That right in Revelation 1, you know, he appears and he's talking to John. And it says John turns around after hearing this voice behind him speaking and he turns. And he says, on turning, I seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands, one like the Son of Man clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash around his chest. The hairs of his head were white like wool, like snow. His eyes were like a fire and his feet were like burnished bronze. His voice was like the roar of many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars and from his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in full strength. And then John says, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. But he laid his right hand on me saying, fear not. I am the first and the last. In the living one, I died and behold, I am alive forevermore. I have the keys of death and Hades. And then if we fast forward, just few paragraphs to chapter two when jesus is talking to the church in smyrna he's he uses the same description he says the words of the first and the last who died and came to life and he tells them in verse 10 you're about you're about to go through persecution but he says do not fear what you are about to suffer be faithful i will give you the crown of life and what i felt the lord has been just speaking to me over the last weeks and beyond has been if we can get our eyes on the beauty and the majesty of the one that we love and on the one that we serve, if we can tremble before his glory and before his presence, no matter what else is going on on the earth, we'll be trembling at his glory and not trembling at the news that we're and so my prayer for us today is, Lord, we want to behold your beauty, Jesus. We want to see your eyes that are a flame of fire. We want to behold your hair that is white and pure like the snow, your feet that are like burnished uh, bronze. Father, we want to see your glory, to tremble at your majesty. And Father, I ask right now, open up our eyes, Lord. Open the eyes of our spirit, Lord, to see what is before us. Just like Elijah prayed, or Elisha prayed for his servant, that he would be able to see the heavenly host that was there at work. God, I ask that we would see beyond the natural, Father. I ask that we would be able to see Lord, the things that you are doing, Lord, that we would behold your glory, your majesty, the train of your robe that fills the temple. Father, that we would be caught up in a different narrative, Lord, we would be caught up in the beauty narrative. And Father, I thank you that the only fear that we'll have is to fear your name, to fear your glory, to tremble before your majesty. Lift up our eyes, I ask. Show us your beauty, Jesus. Let us behold you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Thank you, Greta. Thank you, Bailey. Thank so you, awesome Jay. to just linger in the Lord's presence. Oh, All right. So okay, Bye. I'm gonna... Bye. Hey, Heba. Hey, how are you? This is awesome. I'm doing good. I know. Okay, let me just briefly introduce you to um everyone who's here with us this is a friend of mine heva taylor um she i mean have you've been on staff at ihop like almost since the very beginning yeah what, 17 we, 18 years uh we've been tracking we uh technically joined staff in 2003 but came and came in person in 2005 so just over 15 years yeah so long time and i just wanted to say as i was kind of even thinking like okay how can I introduce Heva to all the women that are here? I just want to say, Heva, you demonstrate 
perseverance mm -hmm. and and perseverance in prayer for the long haul. And I just want to say that that has obviously encouraged me because you've pulled me into different prayer meetings that you've led. We have a monthly small group <clears throat> that Heba leads here with a lot of the IHOP women. But Heba is someone that through ups and downs and through difficulties and even through, I don't know if betrayals is too hard word, but just through seeing friends come and go and, you know, get disillusioned with things. You are someone that has persevered in prayer and have pulled the women alongside of you to do that also. And a big thing of why we're doing these Instagram lives is we just want to give courage and, and be like a little shot in the arm to women wherever they are to Absolutely. Stand in intercession. Absolutely. <laughs> as a mom you're a mom of four four babies so you've been through the little years now you have some that are getting a little bit older absolutely and um you've you've lived those experiences so i'm just excited for what you want to share and you praying for us today and just thank you part grace that the lord has given to you thank you no it's been it's a pleasure being on these things gabe i just loved your word of what you said about revelation one and two and i just was even thinking, you know, praying, Lord, what do you have for us today? And I, I couldn't help but think, you know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist right now to say there's trouble on the horizon and the trouble will increase. You know, we talk a lot that, about that here at IHOP, but um, we really believe that trouble will increase, persecution will come. And when we think about those topics, it's scary, you know, as moms, that's a scary thing. I don't, in my flesh, I'm not excited for that day of persecution. I'm not excited for the day when you either go to church or you go to prison or my kids go to church or go to prison. That's not a, a fun thing. But what I couldn't help, but just felt like the Holy Spirit was reminding me of kind of two keys that I felt like it's time for us right now as women to go deep in two ways. I think for us, it's time to go deep in the Song of Songs. Some of you on this call might be familiar with the message of the Song of Songs. And for those who aren't, basically, it's just a message of the Lord's delight yeah. over us as the bride. And whether you're, you just started believing in Jesus 10 minutes ago, or you've been running this race for decades, I just want to declare over you, the Lord delights in you, and he has joy over your heart. And sometimes as moms or even just as women, our weakness, we define ourselves by our weakness. We define ourselves by the weakness that, he, that we feel and, and we, we continually measure ourselves by ourselves or yeah. we measure ourselves by each other, which both of those is a ditch on either side. And I feel like the Lord is saying, you know, turn your gaze to heaven. There's a verse in one of my favorite verses in Psalm 101 it says to you, O Lord, I sing praises. And the context of that Psalm is a corporate worship and prayer meeting. It's corporate in nature. Mm -hmm. And when we're in that corporate place right now, I think that it's, it's easy for us, for our voices to get lost in the corporate. And we just sing, oh, we're just here to sing worship songs. I'm just another voice. And the Lord says, no, I want you to you, O Lord, lift up your eyes to heaven, lift up to the throne that has never faded billions of years, the Lord is set on that throne and he delights. And what he says goes, you know, he says to the mountains, here's your boundary. He says to the seas, here's your boundary. And they've stopped and they have not moved in generations to generations, thousands and thousands of years. The sea has not stopped its boundary. And yet it's that same authority that he says, I delight in you. And that is the word, just as the same as what he says to the seas, it's the same. And sometimes we think, well, he delights in me. That's not as important as, you know, saying other phrases of scripture. No, it's the same authority of scripture. And I tell you what, it takes a minute by minute, day by day, week by week, month by month, washing because all hell will break loose on our hearts to yeah. get us distracted from the fact that he delights in us. And I really believe, you know, those of you might be familiar with the map of the Song of Songs, but in Song of Songs 1, she says, I'm dark but lovely. She's confronting the accusation in her own heart going, I'm dark in sin in my heart, but Jesus, I'm a lovely because of the cross of Christ. I stand as perfect to the Father because of the blood of his Son. And then in Song of Songs 5, 
she's able to say no to the accusation that other people are saying against her. And I think it's because of the, of the work she did in her own heart in Song of Songs 1. You can't say no to persecution. You can't say no to the betrayal that's coming, the trouble that's coming, even within the church. We're yeah. not going to be able to stay unoffended in our hearts if we don't deal with the accusation now in our hearts that we're not enough, that, w that Jesus doesn't like us, that, that the blood of Christ has not covered. And so it's our homework now, I really believe, as women, but as everyone, every believer in the body of Christ, male and female, young and old, we got to do our homework right now in our hearts that later on, whether that's next year or in 10 years, who knows the timeline? It doesn't really matter. It's not like we can change it. But that down the road, we can say, I, we say now I'm dark yet lovely, but later we can proclaim the beauty of Jesus and stay unoffended in that place of betrayal. So that's kind of the first thing. And then do I have another second just to share something oh, yeah. that's super small? Okay. So the second thing is I would say it's so important that we would link arms and do it together. Yes. I think it's not enough. Like the rodeo days of Christianity are behind us. There actually, there's no such thing as rodeo Christianity. That was American. That was Western. That was never New Testament. That was never what the Lord had in his heart for us. Yeah. I think it is so important. If you don't have someone right now that you can run with, I would say that's your number one prayer request. God, give me a godly yeah. friend because I can't do this without other people. I can't do it without Gabe. I can't do it with the, the amazing people that are on this call. I cannot pull off what the Lord has for me, but I can't pull off what he has for you. We yeah. need each other. And I think, you know, we talked about this months ago, Gabe and I in a conversation, but it's this idea that we go farther together. And another layer on that is the Lord is going to give each one of us something special that he, we're going to go deep in. You know, for us, for, for my husband and I, we feel called to build the house of prayer until the day we die in Kansas City. I mean, I'm just going to say that boldly. Might as well build my grave because I'm dying here. I'm not going anywhere. Come on. And so, but not everyone, that's not, not everyone's calling. I think, Gabe, you have something, the Lord's given you an anointing, an online thing where he's your an online messenger. You're going to go deep in Israel. You're going to go deep in the end times. And that's your cornerstone. And guess what? That's not me. I, I mean, I'm called to study Israel. I need to know kind of general narrative. Am I called to go deep in that? Nope. <laughs> Are you? You might be. And so I'm going to lean on you. I'm going to draw from that yeah. well and go, what's the Lord saying about Israel? I need you. What's, what's the message right now? And let's draw from each other. That takes the yeah. pressure off to be an expert in everything. That's not what the yeah. Lord has for us. We need to link on. We need to be vulnerable with one another. But I'm telling you, just as anyone on this call, you don't have a godly friend. Let's just pray that right now. Yes. Can, we, can we pray that the Lord would give us godly comrades? Because that, yeah. that and Song of Songs, I think, are the two way forwards and what, what the Lord has for us. So good. Yes. Um, pray for us. I'm like, there's so many things I <laughs> want to do and just be like, amen. I just want to say really quick, when you were saying the power of the word of God. I'm thinking he doesn't mince his words. Amen. Like he doesn't just say stuff without consequence. Cause he's the Genesis one God. When That's he right. speaks worlds are created. The sea is created. Light That's is right. created. And I'm just thinking the power of his declaration over his bride to say, my delight is Amen. Amen. Like that same power of Genesis one backs up that word. And Absolutely. so that impressed. And then speaking of Song of Solomon, I'm just, I was feeling this when you were saying that it's the love as strong as death as the most vehement flame. And That's just right. thinking, the way he loves is all consuming. It's fire. And I'm like, okay, Lord, I mean, this, habit, this is rhetoric that we've talked about a lot, but it's one thing to say it. And it's another thing to feel the fire, that fiery seal. Like Amen that's being marked on the heart. And I'm just thinking, Lord, this is what you want to mark us with. You want to mark us with that fiery seal of your delight and your desire over us and to do it together. Because like we've heard for ages there, there's going to be safety in going with one another because that's it right. takes literally one day 
or one week of thinking a certain way and it's like you're on a totally different trajectory than you were the week before you know but it takes comrades in the lord people who are in the word day That's after right. day like, hey get out of that ditch like we're Amen. going this narrow way Amen. so come on i right. love it for us <clears throat> one one last thing and then I, we're going to do a short prayer time here but i think i feel like it's that even those two messages together where we aren't just feeling the delight that's so important that's i don't want to underestimate that at all to feel the delight of jesus as our bridegroom that is worth a thousand million dollars and that's going to carry us through every wind every storm that's coming but it's also taking that precious revelation of delight and speaking it to one another and saying, yeah. no, that is, a, that is a voice of an accuser in you, sister, or in you, brother. Let's speak yeah. the word of God and let's be a voice of delight over one another because the Lord isn't just ravished over me. He's ravished over you and he's ravished over the people that will be persecuting us, that will be accusing us. He loves them and he died for them just as much as he died for us. And so it's our homework now to do that, working that muscle, those push-ups as, as we talk about to do that over one another. So let's just pray. The Lord just would bind us together and give us grace. Yeah. Um, Amen. Lord, we thank you that you hear us. Lord, we thank you that our voices don't just um, bounce off the ceiling. We thank you that we don't have to cut our wrists or, or, or go around crazy like the prophets of Elisha did in the, in the days of older Elijah to get the God's attention. But we thank you that you hear us. We just say that verse again to you, O oh Lord, we sing praises. We lift our eyes to heaven. And Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus that you would strengthen this precious group of women. Strengthen us with might. Lord, I ask for a fresh washing right now of your word, a fresh washing of your delight. Even if we've been stuck in habitual patterns, Lord, I ask for grace to, to press delete on the sin, but to say yes to your delight. Yes, to your ravishness over us, that you call us, you, we are your dove, we're your beautiful one in whom there is no spot in us because of the precious blood of Christ that washes us. And Lord, I ask that you would bind us together, Lord. We ask that you would give us a Holy Spirit binding to one another, to the groups, that the people on this call that, that are representing different parts of the body of Christ, I ask that you would bind us together, that no wedge of the enemy, no wile of the devil would be able to, to cut in. But Lord, I ask for that fire of the Holy Spirit to see one another and the great delight that you have for us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Heba, thank you. This so fun. <laughs> this was so the fun. Lord speaking to us. Awesome. Love you and looking forward to running into you hopefully soon. Yeah. We want to just say see you tomorrow to all the women that are on here. Love you guys. Bless you guys. Bye.